What is going on everyone? Welcome to how to overclock your NVIDIA graphics card using MSI Afterburner guide. So in this guide, we're gonna go over how to properly set up your PC in order to start overclocking your graphics card, how to do it, what's the methodology behind overclocking. This always just depends on the type of graphics card you have. Obviously, you can't just copy my settings. You can't copy someone else's settings with your graphics card. Every graphics card will get different results. So just keep this in mind, this is a trial and error process this is very time consuming but you do get significant boost in fps in games like fortnite in games like valorant in games where the gpu doesn't get used as much it still helps just because you're getting lower latency because the card can process frames way faster even though the frames aren't as intensive as a game like call of duty but what we're going to do is you're going to go to the links in the description and what you're going to do is you know download these programs that i'm going to be showing right here so first program that we're going to be downloading is of course the one and only msi afterburner just uncheck norton 360 for gamer do not check this it's just complete bloatware you only need msi afterburner then press install and then once you do that press ok next except you don't really need reva tuner statistic server so you can uncheck that press next and install and once you've done that you can pretty much just click finish what you're going to do is yours will not look like this but what we're going to do is you're going to go to the gear icon you're going to go to user interface make sure you set it to to MSI Cyber Afterburner Skin White. If you don't, then you can't really follow this video just because you'll be on the default one. Go to General, check these three, and then set it to third party, and then check for available product updates never, and press apply, and press yes, and as you can see, MSI Afterburner is gonna look like this. Now, also download the Uno Engine Super Precision Benchmark. This is really important. We're gonna make sure that our scores go up in this benchmark, AKA the FPS and performance goes up, and we're gonna make sure that our PC doesn't crash, and and the graphics card is stable. So make sure to download this. It is a kind of a big download. It's 1.2 gigabytes. You also download the MemTest Vulkan. This is a really important tool. This stress tests the memory on your graphics cards, AKA the VRAM. So this will help us instantly figure out if the memory overclock that we did in MSI Afterburner causes the performance to increase or decrease. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna also make sure that you uncheck the ECC in your graphics card if you have that NVIDIA control panel. So on a 4090, it will be NVIDIA control panel it'll look like this just uncheck ECC because that will cause issues if that's turned on and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna open up superposition benchmark and get the setup as you see you would want to use AK optimized so it fills up the VRAM bar just like so for me it doesn't really fill it up just because I'm on a 3090 so if you're on a 3090 or 4090 just ignore this just set it to the maximum and then make sure that your VRAM does not look like this if you go above then that's wrong just use a different preset that doesn't really do that so if you're on a 1650 which is what this picture is probably are maxed out at 1080p extreme so just use that instead but for most of us we're going to be using 8k optimized and what you're going to do is you're going to make sure you click this button in the middle you're going to make sure your power limit is all the way up to whatever the highest it is for your graphics card some of you might be at 100 some of you might be at 103 or 125 it just depends just make sure this is dragged all the way to the right and then temperature limit same thing as well then press the check mark and then core voltage you will also max this out for some of you core voltage will not work for some of you core voltage will actually work but with this is completely safe we're not increasing the core voltage overclocking your nvidia graphics card is practically the safest overclock you can do on your system you really just can't mess this up if you do mess it up your graphics card will just crash your games will just crash if that happens you can just turn it down and msi afterburner that's pretty much it you're not really damaging anything Thing unless your bio is flashing the card or doing some heavy modifications to the actual physical card to make it draw more power. If you're doing that, you're in a whole different other league. You're in extreme overclocking. We're just overclocking for more FPS in our video games. But once you do that, if your card is running hot and you know that it's running hot, make sure you set the fan speeds just to 100% just for now. You can turn it down later, but during this process, you want to make sure that your temperatures are not the bottleneck of your overclock. If the temperatures are too high, you get a less overclocking capability. So if your temperatures are very, very high, you won't be able to overclock as a person that has very low temperatures. So this is mostly a problem on 30 series graphics cards and 20 series graphics cards. On 40 series, those things really are power efficient and they run pretty cool. So for the 40 series guys, you might not have a problem with this. But 30 series and 20 series and older, definitely max out the fan speeds. Now, before we get started, you need to make sure your graphics card 
part is set up correctly so you don't damage it. So the first thing is going to be making sure that you have two PCIe cables or three that are separately going to your power supply. You don't want to be using a daisy chain cable for your GPU power cables. And I'll show a picture here in a second of what that looks like. So as you can see, the good is how you want your graphics card to be connected like, and the bad is how you shouldn't have your graphics card connected like. So as you can see on the good, you have two separate PCIe cables, and then you have two separate PCIe cables, and the extensions are not used. And this is for two ports of the power cable and three ports. So make sure that you do that. Make sure you have it connected directly to the power supply. Now, if you do have just a single PCIe cable with the extension plugged into the graphics card, cannot continue with this video. If you do, you will 100% damage your graphics card or it will just crash every time you run a stress test. So don't do that and go fix it before doing a GPU overclock just because that means your PC is just not built properly and whoever did it is probably either a bad pre-built company or just a person that just didn't know how to plug in the graphics card properly. Move on now. What you're going to do is you're going to set everything to maxed out, just like the core voltage power limit and the temperature limit. Make sure those are maxed out. Fan speed, you can also make sure it's maxed out. And then you're going to press run on your unit engine benchmark. And then once you do that, you will get a baseline score. And what we're going to do with this baseline score is we're going to make sure that our score goes up whenever we're overclocking from that baseline. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run this benchmark real quickly and come back once it's, it's done. So as you guys can see, I got a baseline score of 6816 with OBS running and with Nvidia Broadcast running. So those two, I think they lowered my score by like 1000, honestly. So this is probably not a good idea to be overclocking with those two open. Probably close out of things using your graphics card whenever you're running the benchmark just to get a proper baseline score. Once you've done that, and I'll just say that I did that, what you're going to do now is we're going to start overclocking the core clock. And it's pretty simple. We're going to be just going up by increments of 15 because every 15 megahertz is stayed in the graphics card. If you do a weird number, it'll just round it up to the next 15. So most of you should be able to do 75 plus on the graphics card on the core clock. And if you cannot do this, your graphics card crashes, your benchmark crashes, just drop it down by 15 to like plus 60. Those are just for the guys that have a really, really bad graphics card, like some like GT 1030 or something like that. But most NVIDIA graphics cards that are normal and are mid to high end, they should do plus 75, no problem. Just do plus 75, you will go back, run stress test again, and then make sure this score is increasing whenever you change it to plus 75. And then once you do that and make sure that the score went up, that your GPU didn't crash, the benchmark didn't crash, and you didn't see any weird screen tearing or weird screen artifacts on your screen, then you can keep increasing it by 15. So I would, for example, I know 100% this graphics card can do plus 75. So then I would do plus 90, click run, make sure the score is higher than this. And then I would increase it by 105, run it again, and make sure that the score is higher than the previous run. And then just keep rinse and repeat until the graphics card crashes. I get a lower score or my whole entire PC just freezes or the benchmark crashes. So once you get to that point, drop it by 15, run the benchmark again. If it still crashes, drop it by 15 again, and then boom, that's your max core clock right there for your graphics card. For me, I'm just going to leave it at plus 105. I know this card can do a little bit higher, but I'm going to leave it at that. And then once you've done that, get one last benchmark done, just an extra one, just to make sure that it is indeed stable. Once you've done that, then you can start on the memory clock. And then the memory clock is super duper simple. Just put 500, press enter, press apply. And that is your starting point right there. Run the stress test, make sure the score is increased. It should be way higher if 500 works. If it's not, you can lower or if the PC crashes. Any of the other things that I've mentioned before that mean instability, then drop it down by 250. So I like doing increments of plus 250 for the memory clock. And then at a certain point, you have to switch it to plus 100 or plus 50. But this is pretty simple. Most graphics cards that are 30 series or 40 series you can do plus a thousand on the memory clock anything above that probably just have to test the RAM. but if you're on a 30 series or 40 series you could just put plus a thousand you should be straight no problems if there is just drop it down by 250 but again this does take trial and error you do have to stress test this you can't just plug in these numbers that i'm spitting out and then just call it a day do a thousand make sure that the score is way higher than 500 make sure it doesn't crash make sure
make sure there's no weird things happening on your screen, artifacts or bugs or something like that. If there isn't, keep going, plus 250. But keep doing that until the point where your graphics card crashes or the whole PC crashes or you get a blast screen or any of the things that I'm mentioning that mean that you're unstable. So I know for this graphics card, the maximum that I could do is 1250. Anything above that, it probably just crashes. I know on 1500, it 100% crashes. So the maximum I'm gonna do while recording and while using the video broadcast is plus a thousand i'm gonna run this benchmark again and you will see that the score is gonna shoot up from before so let me do that real quickly so as you guys can see my score did go up i did have to basically stop the recording on obs just because it was just messing up the scores but yeah this is not my actual score my actual score is completely different dvd and broadcast and obs do mess up your scores so guys do not have these running in the background do not have anything that uses your graphics card running in the background it will tamper with your scores but once you have this pretty much done what you're gonna do is you're gonna use the mem test vulcan that we downloaded earlier to basically make sure that your memory is stable so what you're gonna do is gonna just open it all right and then once you open it it will start running its thing so as you guys can see it's gonna be stress testing our memory on the graph scar so as you can see my temperatures are higher than usual so that means that it's actually stress testing so the test is around five minutes long and if you pass the five minutes usually you are fine so just make sure you pass the five minutes if you do get an error and an error will look something like this if you do get it just drop the memory clock by 100 or 250 drop it down test it again and then make sure that you pass the full five minutes and then i'm gonna let this run for about five minutes and i'll show you what to do once it's done all right guys so once the five minute test is done it will say this right here so all you have to do is just exit out of it and then it will close in three seconds and now we're pretty much almost done with the overclock if you do get an error drop the memory clock drop the core clock if you still are getting an error even if you drop the memory clock at some point your core clock can start interfering with your memory clock so if you go way too high on the core clock you need to drop it down so you can get a memory clock actually stable so make sure that you do that if that happens to you i've had it happen with a client before so i had to drop him down to around plus 05 just to get him to get plus 500 on the memory so please do that if you're getting errors but make sure that you do run that stress test it's really important but now we're going to move on to basically running a occt stress test and this is just to overall stress test the whole entire card what you're going to do is going to go to the link in the description and download occt now i already have it downloaded it's actually on my desktop once you have occt opened you're going to go to 3d adaptive you're going to set the intensity range from 15 to 65 and then change it increase by five and change it every one minute and zero seconds this increases by five and then just wait the 10 seconds press start let this run for an hour and after an hour if it passes and there's absolutely no errors whatsoever with your graphics card that it shows here then you're good to go you play your games your overclock is stable and it's finished if you start crashing in game that is a sign of instability you need to drop down the overclock none of these tests will actually guarantee stability while gaming so the easiest way to figure out if your overclock is stable after all this is just to play games and see if it crashes and it will take a pretty long time for it to crash if it's unstable so if it does just drop down the core clock or memory clock but anyways that's gonna be pretty much it overclock's pretty much done i'm gonna load the profile that i know 100 works and this profile includes a undervolt on my graphics card so if you want to learn how to undervolt i'll make a new video on that. that's a completely different subject and completely different topic regarding overclocking so there's overclocking there's undervolting i'll leave undervolting for a different video just because that is more for lowering temperatures and lowering power draw rather than getting the maximum performance out of your graphics card but if you made it all the way to the end of this video and you got a stable overclock congratulations you are now going to get more fps in most of your games you can run benchmarks to see the difference between and before and after the overclock and you should see a massive difference especially in things like call of duty but if you got to this point and you still don't know how to overclock or still can't figure it out you can join my discord server and go to the overclocking services channel you can get a overclock done 
by my two overclocking specialists. They'll do it for you. They'll get the overclock done in a pretty timely manner. And then once you do that, you'll get more FPS and it will be more stable. And overclocking just takes trials and error. So don't get hung up on it. Just keep trying. You'll eventually figure it out and then you'll get more FPS. But hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys are interested in a full PC optimization service where you get zero input delay and way more FPS in pretty much all of your games, go to the link in my description and book a PC optimization service. But anyways, guys, make sure to subscribe, like, and comment. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.